it's also really amazing how many good players come from the Philippines. Oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I went to Philippines when I was 15. What was that like? Uh, it was crazy. I went with my friend and uh, I uh, I was playing everybody. You know, I was playing a bartender that I couldn't beat. I was 15. And I was I was thinking I'm good. I mean, I was coming there to play good players, but I ended up playing everybody and I was just amazed how how good everybody's playing over there. Like the guy who works 24 hours behind the bar just never plays pool. I mean, he's just just a regular player in some random pool room can run a couple of racks playing nine ball. That's how how crazy it is. For me it's insane if you walked in, into the bar here or anywhere else I mean, would you imagine that the guy will run a two pack of nine ball? Probably not. Yeah, most likely not. And it, it happened down, multiple man. times for me there. Really? So yeah. the, does the level seemed higher there? Yeah, yeah, and the game is really, really big. I mean, the taxi drivers—they know who everybody knows who Efren Reyes is. You know, Francisco Bustamante. I've met people that are Filipino immigrants to America, and and they'll tell me they're Filipino. I go, "Do you know who Efren Reyes is?" And they're like, "Bata." Yeah, like yeah. they know who he is. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like it's pool, like pool is really, really big in the Philippines. Well, pool came over the Philippines in the 1950s when the GIs were over there. So American GIs were over there, and they brought pool to the Philippines, and the Filipinos just took over. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, like how that transpired, because when they play over there, they're playing on very tough conditions because the tables are all damp because it's very humid outside, and a lot of times. The tables are not balanced very well, and the cloth is dirty, and they use a lot of powder. Oh, yeah, you just throw it on the table. This they is leave, crazy. Yeah, they just leave it on the rails. They leave stacks of powder on the rails, yeah. which is unheard of anywhere else. Uh, uh, there's good. these uh, Efren Reyes matches where he still plays right now. He's playing all the time. He plays constantly, and they put them up online. It when he's playing, not only do they have powder all over the table which gets on everything it's all over the table but every time someone's about to shoot someone who's like either gambling or someone who's been assigned to it comes over and marks chalk yeah. where all the bar balls are in case someone moves the balls so mm -hmm. that's a big distraction and then there's 50 people around the table with flip-flops talking on their cell phones well, also the the action side of pool in Philippines is huge. Like huge. you have people betting every game, like yelling game, uh, yeah. yelling names before every game starts, and you have like uh, chickens running around the table. That's, Literal chickens. Yeah. 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 I was watching the Alex Pagulian <laughs> video, and you hear. <laughs> That's very common. So. Yeah, it's pretty specific. But the scene there is so fascinating because it's contrary to everything that you would ever expect in a, in a pool tournament. In a tournament, other than the Moscone Cup where people are cheering in between shots, in these, turn in these matches that they're playing, there's so much distraction. Oh, distractions every shot. I mean, they're trying to shark you too because if you're a foreign player coming to Philippines, they most likely will be betting against you. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, this place, the way they do it, is the best uh, preparation against someone distracting you because they're constantly distracted. So they learn how to, like, relax and focus. So here, look at this game. So look. <laughs> yeah, that's a typical game in the Philippines. Everyone's smoking cigarettes. People are taking selfies. They're all surrounding. I mean, they are feet from the table. Like moving around, walking while the match is going on with oh, flip flops yeah. on, and you have to move them to shoot every yeah. ball. Like imagine if you're that frozen on that back short rail. Yeah, you have to get in the corner and say, "Excuse me," and these guys are on their phone, and <laughs> it's so normal. Now look at the powder. <laughs> so there's a stack of powder on each side rail, and the stack of powder is so that they can use it and keep the the cue ball moving slick through their hand. But no one anywhere else does this. No. Well, uh, you can also imagine how humid it is. Over yeah, there. Well, he's just practicing right now. He's he's getting ready and warming up. So scoot ahead a little bit so you can actually see the match. This is not the match for sure. Here we go. Now now he's actually playing. So that fucking powder 
that shit gets on the table itself and it slows everything down and it also makes the balls cling they stick to each other oh yeah he's grabbing the cue ball before every game starts too and yeah it gets on the cue ball and then but the because they play in these imperfect conditions because they're accustomed to it they develop these amazing strokes oh, I mean yeah. Efren's stroke is just a thing of beauty and also he I think that's probably one of the reasons why they chose heavier cues because they were dealing with this very slow cloth because it was always dirty humid conditions so in humidity the balls don't move as well because there's dampness on the table oh he is getting a spot from that guy it looks like he's getting a spot well you know Efren's very old now yeah he can't see very well but the guy's still in action constantly yeah. every 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 week